on. Let's go ahead and get started, inshallah. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, I know that the weather is getting a lot chillier and Salah's coming earlier and all these awesome things. So hopefully you guys are taking care of yourself and doing good, inshallah. All right, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yasri amri wa hlul ukhrata min lisani yafqahu qawli rabbi zidni ilma rabbi zidni ilma rabbi zidni ilma. Welcome back to the um, religious literacy program or certification, as you could say. And today, inshallah, we are continuing on with our study of Surah Ibrahim. And we have... Um, Up until this point, alhamdulillah, we have been able to explore different ayat in Surah Ibrahim and how it pertains to like our understanding in our practice and faith and why Allah SWT presented these verses to us in the first place. In the last class, what we did was that we talked about the end of the people. We talked about the end of the people um, of different prophets that the wrong that they've done. Right. We talked about the Prophet Shuaib salam, that his people basically when they didn't believe, it wasn't necessarily just a sense of not believing, but more so like they would they um they would try to turn away from hearing the truth in whatever way, shape, or form that they could, right? And so Allah SWT tells the Prophet salam, in verse number 13 that we we talked about that people trying to run away from the message and not listening to the message that prophets came with was something that was a characteristic and a sunnah of the prophets in a sense that like their people, the pre previous people also did those things. And so Allah SWT tells the Prophet Sallam in this surah that you're dealing with people who are wretched and you're dealing with people who are, who not only are um, not only are tyrants, but they're like inhabit tyranny. Right, like inside of their soul, they're oppressive. And these people for them, Allah SWT says that, you know, God has decided for them. And the the decision that Allah SWT makes for these people is based off of the dua that prophets make. So you have, you know, we talked about Prophet Nuh salam. That Prophet Nuh salam, what did he say to Allah? He said to Allah that I call to my people in the day and in the night. I'll call to my people, you know, quietly, privately, and in public. I call to them, you know, when when they want to hear, when they don't want to hear. Like, in every aspect of being able to call to my people, I call to them, and all that I get out of them is nothing. I get silence. I get them. The more that I call to them, the more the firara, they go away, right? And so after that, Nuh, salam, he does seek help from Allah. He asked Allah subhanahu wa to not leave on this earth anyone who would turn away the servants of God that have already turned to Allah. Musa alayhi salam too, similarly. Allah subhanahu wa you know, has Musa alayhi salam show the signs and things to fit on. And so it gets to a point where they're now, you know, they're, they faced out, faced off, and Musa alayhi salam has but Israel with him and Fir'aun is treating them badly. And Musa alayhi salam says, oh Allah, take away their wealth. Because they're using their wealth to misguide people. So Allah SWT says here in verse number 15 that, that they ask God to decide and that every type of tyrant would fail. And then Allah SWT says, which we will start again from because we did cover this ayah last time, but we'll start from here. Allah SWT says, that hell, hellfire is right around the corner for them. It awaits them. And he will drink from this foul water, right? Now, what's interesting is that Allah SWT is talking about those who they, they basically um, rejected, not only rejected the message, but they were tyrants. And so there is the violations, uh, the violation of the hukukul law, the rights of Allah, and then the violation of hukukul ibad, the rights of the servants of Allah. So every prophet that's come, not only did those people that disbelieved and they were punished and destroyed, not only were they punished and destroyed for their disbelief in Allah, but they were punished and they were destroyed for also the reasons of violating 
the rights of people. And so Allah SWT says that, Allah SWT says that hell awaits for them and they will be given this like foul water to drink, okay? And we've we've talked about this a bit, but Allah SWT says, وَعَلْكَيْنَا فِي جَهَنَّمَ كُلَّ كَفَّارٍ أَنِيدٍ That every single kafarin أَنِيدٍ is someone who basically prevents from good. That every single person that prevents from good a person that is an aggressor, someone that who causes doubt into other people, that for they them alikia they will be thrown. Manna in lilhayri mu'tadin muribin aladi jaala ma Allahi ilahan akhar fa alikia hu fil adab shadid. And also those who associate partners with God, they will be thrown into a very severe punishment. You know, Musa alayhi salam in Fir'aun punishment is this punishment that Allah SWT is talking about is typically done in whatever way to the people that they need it to be done, right? And so, but when we're talking about it, we recognize punishment as the hereafter. And we recognize that as the infinite level of being in Jahannam. And so Allah SWT says that, you know, when the truth comes, it's important to, to believe in that. It's important to recognize it. It's important to internalize it and start acting upon it. And what Allah SWT wants from us is not perfection by any means, but what Allah SWT wants from us is consistency, right? This is why the Prophet says to the companion, Kul amant billah, say, I believe in Allah through mastakim. And then you remain steadfast and then you remain consistent. So Allah SWT says about these tyrants that are preventers of good, that are, that are, you know, ingrained with doubt that are that um, that practice on tyranny and oppression. That for them, they'll be thrown into hellfire, and they'll be given to drink water that is very foul. And then Allah Swt says, He says, "Yata jarra, yata jarra uhu, That he will try. This person will try to like gulp it down. You know how like maybe you take a medication you don't like like for instance, like a cough syrup or something like that. And you just quickly try to drink everything. So you just hurry up and like you try to gulp it down. So Allah SWT is saying that they won't like this drink because it will be foul. foul. It will taste disgusting. It will be so nasty. And they will try to gulp it down. La yakadu, you see, guhu, but they won't be able to, to gulp it down. And then Allah SWT says, That this person would experience death from every avenue. Okay, like every death will try to approach them for every side and every avenue, but they will not die. And the hereafter is forever, it's internal. So Allah SWT is saying that this person will actually even wish to die, but because hereafter, because Jahannam is eternal, they will never die. And then Allah SWT says, And that they will follow, there's an even more intense, like the punishment will keep leveling up. Just when they think they're like used to the pain and they can tolerate it, it will level up. And I know these verses are scary, but we have to remember what got us here. What got us to these verses. These verses that we're covering and we're talking about is that Allah SWT started from saying what? that their messengers came to them. They told them the message very clearly. And what did they do? They not only went away from the message, but they disrespected their prophets. And they said things like, oh, bring the punishment. If the punishment is going to come, then bring it. And so Allah SWT is saying here that since that person wanted to, the punishment to come to them, just know that hellfire is right around the corner. And that hellfire that they're going to experience is going to be so terrible. Allah SWT then gives an example. Now, he says, He says, The example of those who disbelieve in their world, in their Lord, sorry. That the example of the one who disbelieves in their Lord, his deeds, the deeds of the one who reject Allah, that their deeds are like ashes that the wind blows away like ferociously. Think about it where, you know, like it's a very windy day and you put sand outside. It's going to blow away, right? Or you put a piece of paper outside during like 
the onset of like a hurricane is going to blow away. And so Allah SWT says the one who disbelieves and rejects God, that their deeds and their actions and what they do, that it is like a, it is like there, it gets scattered by very furious or ferocious type of storm. And they will have no power over the things that they've gained or they've earned. Allah shayin in the least bit. Thalika huwa dalalul ba'id. This is how someone is far and far astray. Now, the very interesting thing is the first thing is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is letting us know that, listen, your deeds being cast, your good actions being classified as good deeds for you in the hereafter has to be with the onset of belief, okay? La ilaha illallah is what gets a person to qualify for the deeds that they've done in this world to be counted into the hereafter think of it like this say someone is like um say someone is a doctor and they say you know what not even a doctor say someone there is in a field that makes a good amount of money and they say you know what i would like to save money i would like to save my money so they take their money and they spend and they spend and they spend and they spend they earn the money, they got it in their hand, and they spend it on different things. Then one day, this person goes to Wells Fargo, and they say, I would like to see how much is in my savings account. And Wells Fargo tells them, you don't even have an account here, because you have to sign up, so you have no savings. There's Not only do you not have savings, but you don't even have a savings account here, because you never signed up, right? So for us to be able to cash out on our investment of the good deeds and the actions that we do in this world, it requires for us to sign up for that account. And signing up for that account is la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Allah SWT tells us as well that a person who does good, whether they believe or not, will not be wronged in the least bit. And so what happens with the deeds of a person who rejects Allah SWT as oneness and reject, reject Allah SWT as God is that their deeds become wasted in this world, as in they cash out on it. Allah SWT will increase them the hayr, he will give them good, he will give them a more risk, he will give them peace in this world, but they won't be able to cash out on that in the hereafter. So Allah SWT says, A'maluhum karamadin ishtaddat bihi rihu fil yawmin asifin, that it was there one minute and then it's just all blown away. It's like you blow a bunch of money. That la yakudiruna mimma kasabu ala shayin, they have no control over where they want to spend their savings because they don't even have it. They have no control over the mercy that they could have received from their goods, from their good deeds, because they never even like entered into the fold in that way. And that's why Allah SWT says, Dalika huwa dalalu ba'id, because it's the furthest part of being astray, because what people will say is, well, I'm a good person. And yes, that is a huge part of our belief, absolutely. But a bigger part of our belief is the actual belief itself. That if someone is just a good person, and that's a big thing, yes, in society, but what is going to qualify you for that to be able to cash out on that goodness in the hereafter? And that is the belief in Allah SWT. Allah SWT says, talks about this in other places in the Quran as well. He says, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا that those who disbelieve, their good deeds are like a mirage, okay? It's like a mirage. It's like an illusion in the desert. That this a person, th uh, a thirsty person thinks that water is there. Hatta ida ja'ahu until he comes to that water, lam yajiduhu shay'an, and he doesn't find anything there. And this is an analogy that Allah SWT is bringing that you're thinking that you're investing and you're doing all of this good, but then when you go to cash out on that investment, you realize that there's nothing there because you never opened the account in the first place. And so Allah SWT says this that it is like a mirage, like someone walks in a desert and they're like really hot and they're really tired and they think that they see water. And when they get close to it, they realize that it's not water, it's not there. So you think that you're doing so good and so well 
But the fact that you don't have faith and you don't have belief, your direction and trajectory of that good and that well is completely off. What determines our core values and our morals? Well, what determines our core values and our morals is deen. It is the way of life. Allah SWT also says, he says, that the example of one who gives in this world is like the example of like a wind, okay? A frosty, like cold wind. That it destroys the harvest of the people that wronged them. And it's, it, it is not God, is not Allah who wronged them, but they wronged themselves. Meaning that somebody will say, well, I'm a good person. Then why is it not that I can, that if someone's a good person, why is it not that they can go to Jannah? And Allah is saying, because they're committing the biggest sin. And the biggest sin is disbelief in God, right? That's the biggest sin. The biggest sin is disbelief in Allah and being ungrateful to Allah SWT. And this last verse that I want to kind of quote here in this section, Allah SWT says, Ya ayyuhaladina amanu, O you who believe, la tubutilu sadaqatikum bil manni wa ada. Okay? He says, O you who believe. Now it's important for us to like, pay more attention what Allah SWT says, oh, you who believe. We pay attention to all the verses in the Quran. But when it comes to this, the verses that start with, ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, oh, you who believe, it's like kind of like where your ears perk up, you know? Where someone maybe gives like a general message and then they call your name directly and then you pay attention directly. This is what it is. So Allah SWT says, ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, oh, you who believe, do not cancel, okay? Do not cancel, avoid, or nullify your, your charity that you've given, right? With reminders and hateful or hurtful things. And what's interesting here is that Allah SWT is saying that the charity that you've done is a good deed, Right? That's a good thing. Objectively, someone comes and they give their money in charity. Objectively speaking, if anybody else calls it bad, then that person will think of them as like a crazy person, right? So let's want that saying, objectively speaking, giving to charity is a good thing, right? And then he says, but don't nullify it. By what? By doing things that are harmful. By saying harmful things. By talking behind people's back. By treating people poorly. And we see this. We see that Allah SWT is saying that someone can be do a good action, but then they can void their good action by doing something that's wrong, right? By doing something that they shouldn't do. And so Allah SWT is saying this. And he says, nasi. Like those who spend and they give out their wealth and they give it out just to show off for people. That when someone gives to charity and their purpose, their sole purpose of giving to charity is to be able to show off to people so other people can see this, right? That that person is voiding their deeds. They're voiding their actions. And then Allah SWT says, Wala yu'minu billahi, And those who don't believe, that they give in their wealth, but they also don't believe. Well, yawm al and they don't believe in the last day. Famathiluhu kamathili safwanan. That the example of this is like the example of, sorry, one second. He says that the example of this is like this example of a rock that is on the earth, alayhi turabun, and it has dirt on it. That it, it, when heavy rain falls on it, it leaves it completely bare. Okay, there's nothing on it, nothing grows and has nothing, no benefit. La yakodirun ala shayin mimma kasabu. That there's there's no it leaves it completely bare where nothing grows. You have no benefit from it. And then Allah SWT says, La yakuduruna mim ala shayin mimma kasabu, that they are not able to benefit any way of what the things that they have done. Wallahu la yahdil kawmin kafirin. And then Allah SWT ends it off. By saying that and Allah SWT does not guide a nation and a group of people who disbelieve. And this is just showing us again that part of doing good and having good actions and doing good deeds, a big part of it is also having belief. 
And if you don't have belief and you're not doing things properly or with the right, you know, trajectory or way or understanding or breakdown, then you're nullifying the good deeds that you've already tried to do, right? Sister Sophia, question? Um, yeah, are we still on Aya 18 or have we moved on? No, we're still on Aya 18. I was just bringing another Aya that's similar to it. Okay, and what was the reference for the Aya you were talking about? This Aya, it is in Surta Bakara. Mm -hmm. And I don't know the Aya number, I'm sorry. That's okay. But I'll find it. Now, okay. normally I have it right okay. here. Any other questions? Okay, so yes, yeah, so this was just a, an additional reference because Allah SWT is, is bringing, the reason why I brought that reference too is that Allah SWT is explaining here, right? He says, The example of those who disbelieve in their Lord, their actions, it, it is like the, their actions are like scattered away by the, the wind. In a day that is very stormy, they don't have any power over what they've earned or what they've brought forth. And that is the furthest way for someone to be astray. And so Allah SWT also gives us this advice in Surah Baqarah as believers that when we decide to do things that are good, we should not nullify or like... um. Yeah, we should not nullify or cross out that good by doing things that are wrong, you know? And so this is the advice that Allah SWT is saying. Allah SWT is telling us that it's, it is a prerequisite of belief to be able to cash out in that reward. The next thing is that this is something, this is a type of verse that is called like a amthal or amthila, which is more so like an example or an analogy that Allah SWT is, is drawing. And you will find in many different places in the Quran that Allah SWT will say, kafaru, or amanu. And in Surah Ibrahim, actually, there's a lot of analogies that Allah SWT presents. And so the question naturally comes up, why does Allah SWT present analogies? Now, there's a big thing because one, Allah SWT is talking about belief and oneness, right? And we said that Surah Ibrahim is a Meccan surah. And so it's focused on three things. That is the oneness of Allah, which is Tawheed. That is the Risala, which is messengership. And number three is Ba'ath, which is res resurrection. And the nature of preaching anything to someone is that you have to speak to them in ways that they understand. And you have to also present to them different arguments in ways that they can understand. And so Allah SWT will use to straightforward, um, this straightforward, you know, way or advice to be able to tell people about belief. But Allah SWT will also draw comparisons and analogies. And Allah SWT says, in Surah Al-Hashr, the reason why. He says, that these types of examples, we present them for the people, so that they may think, right? So they may take time to ponder. So when you see, you're reading the Quran by yourself, and you see mathal, this word, right? You know that what Allah SWT wants you to do is to think about it. He wants you to ponder on it, right? It's like when someone writes like, um, like when someone basically gives you like a problem, a math problem, and then they bring it to life with some type of example or multiple examples, and they bring it to life in a way that you can understand. This is what an amthila is. This is what an amthal is. This is what examples and analogies do. Allah SWT also says that, and this also is in Surah Baqarah, verse number 26. So he says, as for those who believe, that they know it, meaning the Quran, they know it to be a truth from their Lord. And then he says, but as for those who don't believe, their response is, what does God want by giving us all of these comp comparisons? And then Allah SWT says, that these examples that God puts in the Quran, that it is a source of like, it can be a source of misguidance for someone and a source of guidance. And what that means is that this is an actual level that of care and compassion and mercy that Allah SWT presents by giving us examples. And when Allah SWT is giving you even more examples for you to understand, and you're going further and further away, 
then it's something that is within you that you have to fix in order to like get closer to the Quran and get closer to like Allah SWT, right? Think of it like someone needs help with something and you go out of your way to help them. They need a ride. And you tell them, you can call me, I'll come and pick you up. And then you say, well, if, if even if that's more difficult for you, I can call you an Uber. If you don't like Uber as a company, I'll call you a Lyft. If you don't want me to do that, I'll get you a limo. You go through every step to help that person get to wherever they're trying to go. And at the end of it, they just completely miss their appointment still. At that point, whose fault is it? It's not your fault because you want the extra limit, the extra mile. And these examples is Allah SWT going the extra mile for us to be able to have understanding. And this is why Allah SWT says that it will it could cause people to go astray because those people that don't take these examples on the day of judgment, Allah SWT will say, did I not convey the message to you in a way that was clear? Did, not, did I not provide examples for you in a way that you can understand? So Allah SWT brings this example here and saying that those who disbelieve, their actions are like nothing, right? It's like scattered in the land. And on the day of judgment, they will turn up empty-handed. And then Allah SWT says, Alam tara anna Allah khalaqa samawati wal ard. Lam tara anna Allah khalaqa samawati wal ard. Now is going and is turning to the Prophet Sallallahu And Allah SWT says, do you not see, O messenger, in parentheses, that God created the heavens and the earth for a purpose, in truth. That's how you will literally translate it, right? You literally translate it as in truth, but in more so means for a purpose. That Allah did not, tr- did not create the heavens and the earth for play. He didn't create it for fun. He didn't create it just to exist with nothing to like, when, for no reason. Allah is saying that he created it in truth. And then he says, uh, he says, And if he truly wished and he wanted, that Allah SWT could have removed this all, he could remove you, and he could come with a creation that is new, okay? Now, the interesting thing here is that Allah SWT is showing us that he doesn't, Allah does not need us. And a lot of times what happens is that there's a level of arrogance that creation has with God. And we have this like arrogant mentality that, oh, God needs me. God needs my dua. God needs this. God needs that. And the Lord's one saying, I don't need it. And it's especially to those who the process I'm talking to, because what are they saying? Right? They're thinking that the process is trying to get something out of them. The process I'm saying that I don't need anything out of you. And not only do I not need anything out of you, but Allah SWT doesn't need anything out of you. And so Allah SWT is saying, Alam tara anna Allaha wal ard. Do you not see that God created the heavens and the earth? In it that if God ever were to hypothetically well, need anything, then Allah SWT could have just created it. But he doesn't need anything. He created the heavens and the earth. And then he says, Bilhaq, with a purpose that Allah SWT tells us the day is meant for us to go out and seek God's father. It's meant for us to go out and seek Allah SWT's favor. The night is meant for you to relax and take tranquility in its sakina, right? That each part of your day, each part of your night has purpose. In yasha yudhibukum wa yati bihalkin jadidan. That you're not so special that God, you know, needs you. It, we are all equally replaceable. Right. And now Allah SWT, does Allah SWT give us, you know, certain things because of how much he loves us and he cares about us and his compassion and his mercy? Absolutely, he does. But it doesn't make it that we're irreplaceable. And then Allah SWT says, azizan. And this wouldn't be something that is too difficult upon Allah. Aziz means something that is incapable, that is very difficult, right? Aziz, that's why it's called mighty. It's like a heavy weight. It's like something that is really like, is really up there. So Allah SWT says, that this is something that is not too difficult for Allah. This is something that is not above what God can do. And we know that Allah SWT is limitless. And we know that Allah SWT's power is unlimited. But for some reason, sometimes as human beings, we're not able to completely grasp that. 
And so Allah SWT is saying that he could wipe out an entire nation or the entire world and replace it with a new with a new people. And that wouldn't be something that God would even have to blink an eye for, right? And so this is Allah SWT really showing his 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 true like capable capability. And it's Allah SWT showing his true power. Then Allah SWT goes in and he talks about the day of judgment. And he talks about people being gathered on this day. And unfortunately, like we're going to end on a little bit. I know we have 10 minutes, so I'm going to wrap it up. But we're going to end on a little bit more of a, it's not negative, but we're going to end on something to think about that is not necessarily the happiest of thoughts. And typically I like to end with ayat or jannah and like very uplifting, but I believe that this is also a form of being uplifting. Because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala talks about it, and so Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Wa barazu lillahi jamian," that they all, when they all appear before Allah, "Fakala du afa ulilladina istakbaru," that those that were the weak in society, they will turn to those who had basically had this level of arrogance. Okay, those who were weak in society that followed the other people, right? So you have the messengers. And then there's the people that didn't follow the messenger. So the people that didn't follow the messengers, they would turn to their leaders that they followed. And they would say, Inna kunna lakum taba'an, that we used to follow you, right? And we followed you, why? Because you said that you would save us from this God. You said that you would save us from this difficulty. You said that you would save us from all these things that happened. Inna kunna lakum taba'an, we used to follow you. And they will they will say, so how are you planning on protecting us from all of these punishments that God has presented in front of us? Qalu, those who had this level of arrogance, what they respond is, They say that if God had guided us, we would have guided you. And they try to flip the script and put it on Allah. So the Mufassirun, the scholars of Tafsir, they have a give, they give two explanations. They say, Lo that Lo hadana If God had guided us, then we would have guided you. Meaning that in the world we weren't guided, and therefore you weren't guided either. And they try to put it on Allah. When really they chose to be misguided, right? Allah SWT gives us choice. This is where free will is. And then the second interpretation is that they say that God, if Allah did not like save us, so therefore we couldn't save you. Like we didn't get God's mercy, so therefore you don't get God's mercy. But all of this goes to show is that a person who is not a very good leader, someone who is not very true and honest in their leadership will never take responsibility for the wrong that they've done. They will never take responsibility for the misguidance that they've shown you. They will never take responsibility for taking you off of the path. So what their response is, that they will say that it makes no difference to us whether we rage, okay? Like we throw a fit. We throw a fit. I'm sabarna, or we remain patient. We try to endure it. There's no escape. Either way, we're going to be in this situation. And what's interesting is that the Prophet has a narration about this. The Prophet he says that he says that lama dhakara lama anna ahla nari yakulu ba'duhum li ba'd. That when the people of the hellfire they speak to one another, they will say, Ya ha ulai, O you, O you, O you. That you have received the punishment that we have seen or the difficulty. And then they will say, that we're going to keep going and we're going to be patient. They said that hopefully our patience in enduring this hellfire will pay off and we will get benefit from it like the those who were ben, were patient in obeying Allah, right? So it takes patience and endurance and forbearance to be obedient to God because sometimes you fall short, 
Sometimes it's something you don't understand. Sometimes it feels illogical. Sometimes you feel like I can't do this, right? But you push through and you endure and you push through and you keep going. Why? Because you know there's a reward and you know that you're seeking God's pleasure and you know this is what Allah wants I expected of you. And so now you have that people in hellfire, they're saying, you know what? Maybe we should tap into that side because that's what got those people Jannah. Maybe that will get us Jannah. So they said that we're going to be patient just like those who are patient in their obedience to Allah. And then they say that for nafa'ahum asabaru, that their patient had, their patience had benefited them. And then it says, it's sabaru, that when they, when the people of hellfire are exhibiting this endurance, they're just trying to push through this. For ajma'u ra'yahum, ra'yahum ala sabari, for sabaru, for ta'ala sabaruhum, for jazi'u, that they keep doing this and then the leaders that were there that pushed that basically guided them and turned them away from the dean and guided them to the hellfire will then say to them there's no difference whether we are patient or we rage there's no escape in Allah you have to understand that Allah SWT gives everybody a lifetime to turn to him a lifetime. Whatever that lifetime means to you is a lifetime. And so when hellfire comes and that person's at the point of being in their grave and being in Jahannam, it's, it's too late. The Prophet says Tawbah is accepted up into the gara gara of death. That is means when someone's when death is at the throat of a person, right? That a toba, their repentance is accepted up until death is at their throat. And after that, there is no escaping from Allah. And Allah SWT then brings in the situation of shaitan. The Allah SWT says that all in this, shaitan is the biggest leader. He's the one who has like turned them away completely, turned people away completely. And so Allah SWT says that the people of hellfire would then turn to shaitan and shaitan's response to them, وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُدِيَ الْعَمْرُ When the matter has been decided, meaning that this is hellfire and this is where you will stay, shaitan will then turn to the people and he will say, Inna Allaha wa'adakum wa'adal haqqi, that God made a promise to you all and that promise was true. And then he says, well, wa'adakum fa'akhlaftukum, that I made a promise to you all, but that promise was false. And then he says, ma kana li alaykum min sultanin, but I have no control over you. What you did is what you did. All I did was I called to you all and you answered me. So don't blame me. Blame yourself. This is shaitan on the day of judgment. The one who is literally encouraging us to do wrong. The one who calls to every end of our, our nafs. The one who on the day of judgment when when he is brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shaitan will then turn against us. And he will say, I didn't tell you to do anything. Don't blame me, blame yourself. I called to you, you answered the call. And then he says, ma ana bi musrihikum, wa ma antum bi musrihi. He says that I cannot help you, nor can you help me. Inni kafaratu bima ashrak raktumuni min qabul. And he says that I reject anything that you associate God before. And a bitter torment awaits those who do wrong. That even on the day of judgment, shaitan himself will realize what is happening. And shaitan has realized this since the beginning of time. That when shaitan was rejected from, from Jannah and kicked out, before he left, he said to Allah SWT, Allah SWT tells shaitan, in this discourse that he has between him and Adam al Islam, that Allah SWT told him to bow down to Adam and he said no. And he says that he was created out of fire, he was created out of clay and I was created out of fire and I'm better, I'm better than him. And then Allah SWT says, minha, get out of here, get out of Jannah. فَمَا يَكُونُ لَكَ أَن تَتَكَبَّرَ فِيهَا فَخْرُجْ إِنَّكَ مِنَ الصَّاغِرِينَ That Allah SWT says that if you're going to have this level of arrogance inside of you, then get out because you're now dismissed. You're, you're, you're considered to be disgraced. And then Shaitan asks, he says, أَنْذِرْنِي إِلَى يَوْمٍ يُبْعَثُونَ Give me respite. Give me time. Don't punish me now. 
give me time until the day that we are resurrected. I always want to assess that you are amongst those who have given that time. He says them with this time, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to try to misguide the people by sitting on the straight path. That I will try to misguide them by calling to them what, to what's in front of them and calling to them from what's behind them and calling to them for what's on the right of them and calling to them to what's on the left of them. And you won't find that many of them are grateful. That the biggest thing to help us fight against shaitan is gratitude. And it doesn't seem like a connection, but the thing is that when we are ungrateful to Allah and we do not recognize all that Allah has done for us and we do not continue to show that gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we fall into ingratitude. And ingratitude takes us down a, a road of misery. And I don't have to do this and I shouldn't have that. And why does this person get this? And why not me? And why not, why not, why not? To you have put yourself in such a, a position that is very dangerous. And because you're in that position, you end up doing things that you shouldn't be doing because you're doing it in spite of Allah. And so Allah SWT says that when you act in that way and on the day of judgment, you come and you say, well, shaitan made me do it. Shaitan is going to say, absolutely not. That the promise that your Lord made to you of forgiveness and mercy and compassion, all of that was real. But all I did to you was what's what's that and you listened to that. So I pray that Allah SWT allows us to benefit from everything that we heard here today. I pray that Allah SWT forgives us of our shortcomings. I pray that Allah SWT allows us to be people who are protected from shaitan and allows us to be people who are protected from the wrongs and the evils of this world. I'm so sorry for going over time. I actually did not even realize it. Um, but we will continue on with ayah number 23 in the next class, inshallah. And we'll be five five ayat until December, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan, everybody. Jazakallah khairan. Thank you so much. See you next week. Yes, inshallah. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah khair. See you next week. Thank you, sister. Bye.